I called you here today because we face dire circumstances. Our intelligence has confirmed the existence of a new threat that is unlike any we have seen before. This organization, they are highly lethal and indiscriminate of age, religion, or nationality. The potential for law psychological terror is substantial and cannot be ignored. They are the very definition of an unknown quantity. Our only choice of action is to meet force with force. As of this moment, my program is reactivated, and I am handing over command of all global field operations to you. Well, here's the irony. I paid the ransom to Mythic, and I got uh, a board game about anti-terrorism and HRT operators. Terrorists win. So Mythic delivered. This is Rainbow Six Siege, the board game, all in, plus the bonus content if I paid the ransom or I wouldn't get my stuff. Already a few things I've noticed out of the box. This giant box, you notice this giant crease, this was an indentation, definitely caused by shipping because uh, I don't think they put any supports in that box. Should have expected either the shipper or Mythic, one or the other. And thinking this is the Ransom promo stuff, oh yay, what I always wanted. The greatest sin you could do to a neoprene mat, don't know why this was acceptable, especially since they like triple charged me on shipping. And bonus boards, which uh, I guess adds some variety. I think this is just the bonus content, which kind of sucks. But we have our dice tray, which I'm actually, you know, pretty impressed with it. A dice bag with dice in it. Five years of operators, your one, two, three, four, five, and then what they call the runner-up bonuses. I think this is a promo. I don't remember, but I got to double check. I believe this is the laser pointer. And I have no idea what's in these surprise boxes that aren't marked. But they have a Ubisoft holographic foil. It's, uh, I don't know. I said I wasn't going to buy licensed games, and I backed this, like, right after the Darkest Dungeon. I don't know if this is going to be a good game. I'm going to try to go with an open mind. I will say that Mythic didn't take the money for this campaign and run, but I do feel bad for all the other backers of the other games that I think Hell and some other stuff that Mythic did that to. And I feel very, very sad for you people. But also know I have been ripped off on Kickstarter many times, and it's just an issue with how Kickstarter is. And until Kickstarter holds people responsible, it is definitely an open scam site. I also think that in nature, it's a critique of how the market is for board games. Don't put a product out if you actually don't have it designed. Putting intentional concept art is just the same way as DOD contractors rip off the federal government. Overpromising and not being able to deliver are just really bad, especially since there's no accountability. This is a very, very large map. This is ridiculous. I think it's bigger than the Darkest Dungeon map. Yeah, that's uh, not a 3x3, three three, but it's pretty damn big. Did you get 3x4? I do have to say the art's really cool, and unlike the Darkest Dungeon map, it's not as badly messed up. There's no creases. I think this might come out over time with gravity. I'll have to throw that over a chair or something. Got uh, these special operator dice. And I don't know how much interest there's really going to be in this video because uh, this isn't coming to retail. Mythic definitely uh, screwed everyone on this. They screwed themselves, too. That's an odd number of dice. Seven dice. I wonder what the default normal dice look like. 
But everything seems to have the Ubisoft uh, quality control seal on it. So we'll have to see how good everything looks. And of course, the most important part, is the game fun? And if it is fun, well, yeah, that sucks for everyone else. <laughs> But I got this because I actually enjoy skirmish games. The last skirmish game I really enjoyed was Imperial Assault by Fantasy Flight Games. Rainbow Six Siege kind of felt the same niche. I actually was a big fan of the video game. The only problem with the video game is the online community was super toxic. And I got out by year four, so I don't really know all the other stuff. But I've heard they fixed it, and I'm hoping that, you know, they'll remake Siege version two, I guess. I don't know. But I was really excited about the board game, and that's why I backed it. Are there no batteries included? These are some weird battery sizes, and this feels like a terrible laser. Well, I should do a line, or is it a dot? <laughs> Okay, I think that might be broken. Or the batteries are the wrong way. There is a prism in here. Cool, 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 cool. Yeah, so uh, my laser is definitely broken or the batteries are dead that it came with. Don't know why I was expecting this to work because uh, Mythic just is not very good at uh, stuff. So that sucks. So I'll put in a request to replace that and maybe this box, but I doubt they'll replace anything because uh, Mythic pretty much sounds like they're bankrupt. And I feel like they tried to do a Hail Mary with Darkest Dungeon in this to get it out before, you know, they get screwed. Don't know if any of that's true, but they're not giving a very good impression of the future of their company. With all the extra money they've asked for, they could have, you know, at least made sure the QC was good. I do like the big box, I just don't like that it's damaged. Much better than the Darkest Dungeon big box, because the Darkest Dungeon big box is just a scam. Oh, they did put uh, inserts in, they just uh, don't go all the way up. And they're kind of hard to get out. Good job on uh, crappy design. And this cardboard feels very cheap. I already hear it cracking. So nothing on the interior. And you can definitely see that break right there in that from something pushing on it because they refuse to put stuff in here to support all the way. Again, I am not surprised because uh, just not really concerned about a QC, just want product and money. Do I have broken plastic trays like the Darkest Dungeon? This seems poorly thought out. Well, nothing broken in that one. And nothing broken on these. Oh, that's surprising. I was expecting this to be damaged. All the plastic tokens and terrain. They do sound good, and they are 3D tokens. That's a little surprising. I was expecting them just to be flat painted on plastic. But they do sound very nice.
They actually do a really good job on these tokens. I'm actually complimenting Mythic on something. And they numbered all the bags, except for that one bag. Weird. I'm guessing this uh, is another plastic tray, but it actually sounds like stuff's in here. Oh, here's the terrain. It's actually some nice terrain. Feels nice too. Hollow base, yep. Hollow. At least the terrain looks really cool. Well, that's kind of neat. Alright, let's uh, get to the actual game stuff. So here we have Six Siege. The box contains 22 operators, 4 recruits, 2 alternate operators, 3 game modes, a double-sided board, and all related components. Six Siege is a asymmetric board game. Tactical game based on Ubisoft's Tom Clancy Rainbow Six Siege. Agents from different task force are recorded in Team Six to train and avert a global crisis. They compete in a friendly matches and attack the defenders. Combine unique operators from powerful squads, deploy them with destructible maps, and lead your team to victory. Fast-paced action that will keep you on the edge of your seat until the end of the game. As an attacker, you will expose, use explosive arsenal to destroy walls and obstacles to achieve your objectives. As the defender, you'll shape the battlefield to your advantage and seek to thwart your opponent's plans by preventing them from attacking. It's a one-hour game time estimate. Age is 14 plus. Two to four players. That's actually neat. I thought this was just a two-player game. And this official Ubisoft sticker is actually on the box and not the plastic wrap. On the inside. Our rule book feels, uh, it feels good, but it looks shoddy with all these wrinkles in it. I'm not exactly sure why it has all these wrinkles. It's actually a very nice rule book. Everything is pretty well laid out and detailed. Their glossary, we have an index, we don't have a glossary on the back, which is a big flaw. No, no glossary. That's a shame. Is this a reference card? No, this is uh, Maps of the Mission Zones, I'm guessing. Yep. I wonder if the components are clear coded. Important note sometimes your pledge isn't perfect. Cool. So, I will reach out to Mythic and see if they will replace that box and. Uh, Give me a working laser. Operator instructions, gadgets. Okay, we have our reference sheets. Screen printed, or not screen printed. What is that uh, thing? I'll figure it out later. Instructions on how to put stuff on. Oh look, I actually had to put operator on the rings with a sticker. That sucks. Looks like a team roster of every character of attacker and defenders. Might be helpful. It doesn't really tell you what they do. Here's our sticker sheet with all our character names that are really hard to see. That is going to be very annoying. Lots of cardboard. Or one game board. Alright, so the mat is way bigger than the game board. But it is double sided. Not 
really sure why you have a neoprene mat when you have to use the cardboard boards. That seems disingenuous. But then again, Darkest Dungeon was like that. Okay, that's a little bit better. We have our line of sight tools. Tactical inventory boards, they're recessed, so that's nice. Exclamation points. Uh, I think these are cameras. It's a jammer. Not sure what those are. I think these are more cameras. Our rings, plastic stands. Plastic cubes that look metal, that's weird. Not sure what those are. More dice that look exactly like the other dice. Because they are. More security cameras. More stands. More stands. Blue thingies. And uh, red thingies. Did they color code the minis? Kind of. All right, at least the bases are color coded. We have fire and smoke, or poison gas, and then smoke. We have the drone. Our six siege marker. They do like that they put bullet holes in it, but it's not very detailed. Our poison gas terminals. That one actually has a keyboard, this one does not. And it's blue, so I'm guessing that's a defendable objective. Well, no, blue is attacker. It's not as detailed as I was expecting, especially since I played the video game. I mean, you can tell what it is, but it's not as detailed. Let's see the minis. Could have done more detail, but it's actually all right. Smoke and uh, these are some knockoff guns that aren't exactly real. The worst part is, if you don't play Six Siege, you're going to have to look at these and try to figure out if the art lines up so you can put the right uh, name on the base. That, uh, that kind of sucks. I know this is on me. I should have known better with how Mythic's been doing stuff and after the Darkest Dungeon. At least there are no cards for me to sleeve, so that's kind of nice. Organization's going to be interesting. And then, of course, the big question, will everything fit? So, again, the Ubisoft seal of approvals on here. Is this Sam Fisher? Is this who this is supposed to be? Agent Zero? Still got to put the stickers on. And I got to find if these guys actually have their token, because there's a cardboard token. I also like this. It's a, <laughs> a punchable out token that... Doesn't fit in this slot. Rings and, uh, I don't know what those are, proximity mines? But we have our splinter cell looking, might be Sam Fisher. Is that the SK2000? No. Eh, it's close enough. All right, start with year one. We have eight operators, Buck, Blackbeard, Capato, Habana, Frost, Valkyrie, Kevira, and Echo. Eight operators, eight profiles, eight base rings, eight entryway Overwatch tokens, eight hidden operator tokens, three special gadget tokens, three hole ceilings for Buck, three plastic special gadgets, three eye cameras for Valkyrie, two plastic overlays, two fire overlays for Capato, one leaflet also includes one alternate, Hibana miniature, and Hibana profile. Neat.
And again, the stickers. I need to check all the plastic tokens and make sure that they match. Our profile boards. I'm guessing that's the alternate. Yep. Okay, those are all plastic. Our alternate sculpt. Not super detailed, but at least it gets it across who they're supposed to be. Year two, we have Jackal, Ying, Zofia, Dobaki, Mira, Lison, Ella, and Vigil. Huh. <laughs> this one's upside down. Eight operators, eight profiles, eight base rings, eight entryway, eight hidden operator tokens, six special gadget tokens, and one leaf foot. This box doesn't feel right with the cardboard. I think it's just a thicker card stock and not cardboard. More tokens, more uh, labels. There's an alt Lison. Okay, included is the alternate smart. At least nothing is broken yet. Year three, we have Leon, Tanika. Maverick, Nomad, Mastro, Alibi, Clash, Cade. This one's packaged right. Eight operators, eight profiles, eight base rings, eight entryways, ten hidden operators, eight special gadgets, four Maverick, Lion, and Cade. Two special gadget standees, evil eye cameras, one leaflet, and includes alternate operators. More leaflets, more tokens. Character boards. Stale Clash, Alibi, Cade. There's my Stale Cowboy. I do have to say, I like the humor of this guy in a giant Gatling gun. Year four, Gridlock, Knock, Amaru, Kali, Moza, Warden, Goyo, and Wani. Eight miniatures, eight operator profiles, eight base rings with stickers, eight entryway overwatch tokens, eight hidden operator tokens, two special gadget tokens, four special gadget standees, one Activil gadget token with operator Amaru, two plastic overlays, one leaflet, and includes the unlocked version of, or alternate unlocked operator. If I don't sound super enthusiastic, it's because I kind of have buyer's remorse because of how much I pay for this and paying Mythic's hostage fee that I usually go on the principle I do not negotiate with terrorists. And Mythic seems to be that way. But they put me in a predicament of I either spend a little bit more and get my stuff at least, or I don't, which I think is a very shitty policy because Mythic still is not giving refunds from what I've been paying attention to. It takes them forever, and that's why I think they just don't have money, and they're going under. They're trying to save a sinking ship, and I can appreciate that from a business standpoint, yeah, but why did you spend it all? Uh, this guy just looks like Cobra Commander. I didn't even put, try to give details for that chain netting. It's way too smooth. A lot of these details are way too smooth. All right, year six or year five. We have Oryx, mostly Aron, Zero, Ana, and Ace. This one only comes with six operator miniatures, six operator profiles, six rings, and self-adhesive labels. 
six entry overwatch tokens, six hidden operator tokens, four special gadget tokens, two special gadget standees, one actable gadget token for operator orcs, one leaflet, and includes the alternate ace miniature and profile. This one came with the least stuff too. All right, so we have the two versions of zero. Weapons are different. Abilities are the same. I guess that just means he's dead. Or incapacitated. Is this an AK or a Vapor? Miniatures are just not as detailed as I was expecting, especially seeing the Darkest Dungeon ones, but I'm guessing that's for cost-cutting procedure. And we have our dual runner-up box. Sludge, Ash, Melissa, Dokabi, Kevlar, Maverick, and Mosey. These are all characters that are, okay, these are just all alternates. Yep, seven alternate operators. Either rings, five base rings with labels, five entryway overwatch tokens, six hidden operator tokens, four special gadget, two special gadget miniatures, and one leaflet. This one doesn't include anything special extra. Okay. Well, that's a lot of stuff. I will pack all this and see if it fits in this uh, awesome box of nonsense. BRB. Welcome back. In typical mythic fashion, I'm not surprised, but this is also something I've talked about for a long time about the problem with how people design stuff, cram it in and try to get you to buy the extra stuff without actually like doing any research in the product they made. They just kind of throw everything in and it's like, it'll work, it's fine. This is all in big box that's supposed to store the whole board game. You might be wondering why I got these uh, fire, smoke and toxic gas tokens. These boards, the actual unit boards, this range roller. And my other favorite thing is this tray actually doesn't fit in the box. <laughs> Surprise, I know, it's weird. It doesn't fit in the core box either, unless you want to just jam it in there and then never ever recover it. But this box sits approximately about a half inch above. I don't want to tip it over because I don't want the components to shift to make a mess. I spent a long time organizing this the best I could. Some more close-ups of that box damage. Love that. I did contact Mythic. Hopefully they'll get back to me about it, but I doubt it. All right, first off, I am happy that everything mostly fits in the box. There are caveats to this as usual. The minis, I looked at the Kickstarter again, and yeah, they're not very detailed on the Kickstarter. I thought they were going to make them more detailed. I do have to say, though, that these 3D tokens, they're acrylic cut with print on them. They're actually really nice tokens. I'm amazed if they put as much quality into making the tokens that they did to like all the other stuff. It'd be great. And you heard me complain about the stickers. These rings are pointless. After reading the game manual and understanding how it works, why even bother? They are not required for gameplay. They actually have no purpose other than to tell you the unit's name, which you could just put on these bases. So I don't know why they're here. Oh, why didn't you tear down the 3D terrain, you say? It's really annoying to constantly set up stuff that you might have to use for a game repeatedly. And I was hoping that they had a better way to store it or they actually make tokens because I don't think you need physical barricades if you were going to make tokens. But they did not make any tokens for these barricades or special parts, even though they made unique tokens for like these wall barricades. It's very interesting how they did that. They do have rubble tokens. Too bad there's eight of each and the 3D terrain only comes with five. And they are a limited resource, so you have to play with what you got. So I was like, well, there's not enough 3D tokens. Why did they do that? Again, another weird mystery. I like the concept of these 
being the standees for certain security devices, gadgets, and whatnot. I don't like that the stickers are going to be placed on a clear thing. It's going to be really hard to see. So I don't know how well that's going to work. A lot of the core concepts of this game that I think actually would make it really good is the fact that there is a timer. And it's a high stress, just like the video game. How well it transitions to the board game, I have yet to see, but I will get around to playtesting it. But I like the concept of the high pressure and you only have a certain amount of time to think. So not being able to have, you know, say what it is directly and read back and forth kind of adds to that tension of forcing people. But you already have a timer. On more restrictive time formats, I'm guessing that it's going to be a big play unless you've played the game a lot and you know exactly what you're dealing with. I thought these were discarded. No, you actually need these for a game mode. So they didn't give you the division to actually keep stuff kind of separated. So I just kind of cluster everything together. This constant teardown is bad. But the rings are just pointless. I know you have this space up here to fit a stack of like three cards it's not going to work for all of them. And another gripe is that when you're picking operators, you're going to have to go find the card, you're going to have to go find their gear, you're going to have to find their tokens. All these pieces are disorganized in this type of filing system that people think is acceptable for games like this. People don't want to play games where setup is way too long because not everyone has the time to spend a whole day playing board games. Personally, looking at this, it's just like, this is a pain to do the constant teardown if you want to try to get the box and look nice. If you just want to do it and never touch it again, sure, I guess that works. But I like playing my games. And this last part, again, I put the boards under here because I could just turn the box over without damaging it because it's really tight in there. I know there's space here for all these tokens, but the constant teardown and setup, and some of the tokens like this won't stay together unless I glue it. The casting on it just on certain pieces aren't great. The ones that slide lock, of course, are going to stand fine, but the ones that just clip into the side like this, they're probably going to need glue. So they're just not going to work. I definitely think that uh, if they got rid of these rings, I don't know how much that uh, they got charged to make this plastic, but I'm pretty sure it's like a cent. But they could have removed that and freed up a lot more space to actually make it organized. I'm not surprised. When they give you this much cardboard, this thick, and a stack like that, there is no way it's going to fit in a box like this with all the other components. Pros. No, nothing is damaged, which is a first. Mythic usually has some bad damage stuff. Nothing is too badly deformed. The trays aren't busted, so they did up some QC stuff. They did deliver. There's uh, some questionable stuff in what they decided to do with that delivery, but at least I didn't pay money for absolutely nothing. But I am really interested in trying out the game and see how it goes. I am glad that there are no sleeves. There are no cards to sleeve. These tokens are the most impressive thing, just the fact that being 3D is amazing. 3D, really well printed. They don't scratch. Easy to read. The rules aren't super complicated. It's mainly the time thing and getting people used to understanding every different symbol and terminology. I think Mythic made a huge mistake not bringing this game to retail. Mechanically, I think the game is very sound, just reading the rules. They're easy to understand. The only thing it comes down to is playing enough and having that group that's willing to dedicate knowing this type of system, like I said, with the iconography, because you're not going to have the time to look and examine everything back and forth. You're going to have to have people that actually know this, like, deep down that they play this nonstop, this is what they're really into. And there's a market for that. The pre-generated maps have layouts that have random changes. I shouldn't say random changes, but they have changes that you can make. In the more difficult modes where you can move around furniture and terrain, a lot more to that aspect. But having people that are very familiar with the continuous plays, that they know the operators and the gadgets, this game could actually do really well with that group. Now, I think Mythic made a huge mistake not bringing this to retail, but, you know, Mythic is having Mythic issues. But this is a very interesting format they went with. It 
kind of tries to simulate some parts of the game, but it's not exactly like how the game would work. So it's different enough I can say, hmm, this isn't trying to recreate the video game. It's a different experience. If you like Rainbow Six Siege, the video game, a lot of shared similarities, but there's a difference to it. And with the two-player to four-player variant, it's kind of interesting because they gave you this random upgrade recruit system, which I was like, that adds a little bit more in depth to it. So I can see this game having a lot of potential with people that love old skirmish games or, you know, just skirmish games in general. I'd say old because Imperial Assault, they stopped making a while ago, or they stopped adding stuff to it. It's considered a complete game is what I heard. But I loved Imperial Assault until, you know, they just rushed it and got it because they're going to kill it. But Imperial Assault was a really good game. I like the tournament format for it. It's kind of like how I talk about Senjutsu. Senjutsu has all that potential, too, also. This game has it. And I can actually see it clearly. It's not like Darkest Dungeon where this sent like a mess and they were just trying to get it out and it was a money grab. I actually think there is a genuinely good product here. And that's really rare coming for me because obviously, you know, I have a hate boner for Mythic. If any retailers got their pledge and you are selling to retail, I know you got to make your money back and it's going to be a huge price hike. But I do think that there is a genuine interest in this game if Mythic can continue running and hopefully bring it out to retail. Sadly, I don't think that's going to happen because Mythic has been losing confidence daily. But I wish them well, and that's not being sarcastic. I do wish any company that's actually trying to do a product and do right well. Mythic has just been on that razor's edge of, is it a scam or is it not? And so far, it, it feels like it's a 50-50 still. Because they did deliver Six Siege after paying that ransom. I'm not happy with it. And I was going to hold that against them. But overall, I don't think it's worth as much as Mythic charged me. Like three times. Shipping, extra money, begging, whatever. But I also know that IPs cost a lot. And I have no idea what Ubisoft took in their cut. I mean, it's just like Red Hook. That's all deals that we're not privileged to know. And they just might have made a really bad deal. Yeah, that's the problem with IP games. I'm trying to create the theme and the environment. I actually kind of like the mix of the cardboard. But if they can do the job with the tokens, I wish they did that with the cardboard components. Like, these would be so much better as acrylic. But right now it's just a weird hodgepodge. If you get the coloring right and everything, like I can't color acrylic like this, I would love acrylic tokens like this. Like these barricades, these would be great if they were acrylic. But instead, they're just cardboard standees that just slide in weird. Which is odd, because you have these plastic bases. They could have just done the same thing that way. So I don't know why they tried to do that. Another thing that was really weird is a lot of the furniture pieces... ...don't match the cardboard. Especially for the broken walls. The other stuff, yeah, I guess, whatever. But the fact that they don't match the cardboard pieces that they give you in all three or four boards, I guess, depending on whatever you order, is just kind of odd. There's all the sticker sheets and excess tokens. And again, it's weird that some of the tokens are plastic and some are cardboard. I had to go back and look and see what was needed for what. 
So it was very odd. They give you a lot of these 3D terrain that's different, that's cardboard. And I kind of want to just put it all together and throw it in a separate box. The manuals and the mission setup, everything so far seems pretty good. Overall impressions, I think this is actually a good game for me. I like these types of strategic thinking, fast paced, don't waste time, I'm here to play a game type games. I just think that Mythic is still messing up on making a neoprene mat that doesn't replace the game board, doesn't actually help. It might be a luxury enhancement, but the, it's always damning. Making unnecessary components like these uh, rings here to put operator names on when they're not required for gameplay. In fact, they're probably more of a hindrance just because the way they work, you have your line of sight from your character. So you have your line of sight from your character with this nub and putting that just kind of messes up that nub a little. So I don't think that was really a smart idea to include it. I don't actually understand why it was included as a thought design. Someone should have sat there and be like, this is pointless. But I feel like someone threw it in there because it's like, oh, it justifies the price. It's it's extra. The laser tool, obviously a rip off because mine doesn't work. Just some odd things they, they threw in there. Because again, we have like this rubble token terrain piece that is not plastic. I don't know why they chose to do what, and some of it would be like, oh yeah, it's for core stuff. I challenge you with that saying that these operator tokens for the defenders, I have a copy of all of the, two of them for all the expansion stuff too. So don't tell me, oh yeah, no, they get, if you didn't buy all the other crap and you bought the plastic tokens, you're going to get a bunch of stuff that doesn't go to it. So don't, don't try to defend that. That's a bad defense. But that has been the unboxing and first impressions of Six Siege. If you like what I do, consider subscribing. If you get any comments, gripes, complaints to me, or saying, you know, that you're a Mythic fanboy and I'm totally wrong, I'd actually like to hear your defense of Mythic. Like I said, I give them credit for defending or delivering a product. I do give them that. But I do think that there is a lot of bad business decisions behind them. And the fact that they are trying to run it like an MLM using project money to back another project for the future, which is just the plague of Kickstarter and the nature of it. But jumping into an IP game, I actually think they could have got this without taking the Six Siege IP. I think they could have made a game from the ground up, called it something Special Forces Operator Task Force, whatever, and it wouldn't have cost as much. But let me know what your thoughts on that are. Other than that, self-promotion. I'm still doing the 2024 giveaway. I am probably going to go throw the Six Siege mat into that giveaway because I don't see me using it. I have a 6x3 table, and it's still way too big for this table. I also threw in the uh, art packet to the 2024 giveaway because I just don't care about it. If you like Rainbow Six Siege art, I also have the skin code, so if you want that as a prize, that's definitely in there too. But other than that, take care and GG's.